Hi, I'm Bob Allard, and we started DivineMercySunday.com to make it easy for every parish to celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. You may be a priest, a layperson, or just someone that wants to find out some information about the feast. Let me show you around our website. Alright, if you're a priest and new to this website here, let me show you around a little bit. Uh, probably one of the first things that you'd like to read here is the open letter to bishops and priests. This is a letter that I wrote to tell you how wonderful Divine Mercy Sunday is and how you can use it as an evangelization tool to get Easter only Catholics and fallen away Catholics back to the practice of their faith. I think you'd enjoy reading this. Well, let's go back to the home page again. Next item down here is the documents for bishops and priests. Let's look at what we got here. Right at the very top, how to celebrate Mercy Sunday leaflet. This is a leaflet that we just recently put together to help priests and bishops know how to celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday the way that the Holy See would like to have it celebrated. Uh, this is based mostly on the duties of priests that are included in the plenary indulgence for Divine Mercy Sunday and is really the guiding light for priests and bishops to uh, correctly celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. This other next item down here is a uh, leaflet written by Father Seraphim Michael Enko. Really it helps to explain how the octave of Easter is Divine Mercy Sunday and where the, the, uh, the idea of octaves came from. Really, really great reading here. I'm sure you'll love it. Uh, next item down here, Bishop's Letter to His Pastors. This is a, a letter that we put together that the bishops can use to, to uh, get their pastors uh, psyched up to celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. Now let's look at this next item here on the list. Well, it's a bulletin insert. We designed a bulletin insert a few years ago that could be used on uh, uh, Easter Sunday to invite the Easter only Catholics to come back to the practice of their faith. It says everything here about the feast, even includes a number of days that you have before uh, Divine Mercy Sunday, which is 20, uh, to go to confession. In fact, you, always, uh, you also have 20 days after, you know, if, of course, if you're not in mortal sin. What we recommend to put on the back of the bulletin insert is the confession guide. You come here, we have it here in both English and Spanish. And, of course, our bulletin insert, too, if you click here, you'll see that it's also available in Spanish. All right, now we'll go back here. Oh, this is loading up. All right, here it is in Spanish. All right, let's go back to that uh, page, Documents for Priests, and see what we got here again. All right, of course, yeah, we have the confession guide here again. Uh, I've been asked so many times, do priests have to talk about the plenary indulgence for Divine Mercy Sunday? So I put a bunch of little... Uh, documents together on these two pages here that talks about uh, why we should talk about the Divine Mercy Sunday plenary indulgence and whether we have to or not. I think you'd be really uh, informed well if you read this. Uh, this other document here, Code of Canon Law Pertaining to Priest Duties for Reaching Out to Souls. Uh, I was really intrigued when I read uh, Canon 771-2 that reads, the pastors of souls, especially bishops and pastors, are also to, to make provision that the message of the gospel reaches out to non-believers living in their territory, since the care of souls must also extend to them no less than the faithful. So this means that pastors and bishops are to reach out to everybody that lives within their area with the message of the gospel. So I'm saying to myself, and the good news, I'm saying to myself, what's better good news than Easter and Divine Mercy Sunday? So I think that this is a, a, a really good idea and a really good excuse to, to get out uh, to the public and tell them about this feast. This other uh, document here is called the Octave of Easter, and it talks about how Divine Mercy Sunday is, was, you know, why it was placed on the Octave of Easter and the importance of the octave. And the way we really look at it is that, you know, Easter is an eight-day eight feast. 
And like any other feast it's, that we celebrate, you know, a carnival or a festival, the last day is where they draw the grand prize. And it's the same way with Divine Mercy Sunday. Divine Mercy Sunday is the grand finale of the Easter feast. And because Easter Sunday is the world's, Easter feast is the world's greatest feast, it has to have the world's greatest, greatest gift. And what is that? The promise of the total forgiveness of sins and punishment, a straight ticket to heaven. And this other document here that I put together shows how the Feast of Atonement, Divine Mercy Sunday, and the Octave of Easter is all tied in together. Of course, Easter is an eight-day feast, and we can see it here. It starts on Easter Sunday. It's the grand opening, and all week we're celebrating. And then it ends on Divine Mercy Sunday, the Octave of Easter, the grand finale, where we, re we can receive the plenary indulgence and the total forgiveness of all sins of punishment. But it's also like the Feast of Atonement. If you remember, the Old Testament Feast of Atonement was 10 days, 10 days long. And on the last day of the feast is when the uh, high priest could go into the Holy of Holies and offer the blood sacrifice. And it was for the Jews an annual preparation for the judgment. And it was their greatest feast. And, they, and they, the 10 days that led up to it, they call it the 10 days of awe. And isn't this the same way? Don't we have the 10 days of awe here? If you go from Holy Thursday to Divine Mercy Sunday, the octave of Easter, the grand finale, we have 10 days. And this is really the, the greatest type of time of celebration in the Catholic Church, and really the 10 days of awe. All right, now let's go back to the home page, look at some other things that we have here. Uh, oh yeah, we have this brand new leaflet here, the second item from the top. It's for door-to-door -door evangelization. And it's called Come to the Feast of Divine Mercy. Now you can, this is a PDF form. You can print this out and make a nice uh, trifold on uh, <clears throat> eight and a half by 11 paper. It even includes, includes information for non-Catholics or people that have been away from the faith. And I think this is going to work really good. All right, what else do we have here? Okay, we have a special uh, Mercy Sunday packet for pastors, something I put together a few years ago that's pretty popular. Helps you to understand uh, what Divine Mercy Sunday is. Again, just a little bit more information. Also, over here we have a new DVD for church leaders. This was made at a uh, seminar for priests a few years ago at the National Shrine of Divine Mercy. Excellent, excellent teaching tool. Next item down on the list here is the plenary indulgence instructions. We've been asked so many times, you know, how many time, how many days that you do you have before or after Divine Mercy Sunday to to get a plenary indulgence? We contacted the Vatican, and they, they told us they gave us a, an idea. Excuse me, I'm on the wrong page here. This is this this page here is actually a page that was taken from the Bishops Committee on the Liturgy newsletter that was issued in. Uh, 2003, and uh, it talks about the, the plenary indulgence. That's a good uh, summary here. And the last paragraph here, I really like here, says, in addition, the decree requires that parish priests should inform the faithful about the plenary indulgence, which I think is really important. Okay, this the clarification for confession time. This is what I was talking about. We contacted the Vatican, and they told us it's the, the correct amount of time for confession is 20 days before or after Divine Mercy Sunday, and this explains it. And it also goes directly to the Vatican website if you want to see the information right on the Vatican website. All right, let's go back to the home page here. Uh, okay, here's an article I wrote, World's Best Evangelization Tool. Gives you an idea how you can use Divine Mercy Sunday for evangelization. Uh, next item down here. Okay, uh, what else do we have here? Yeah, we have some, uh, right here we have, let's see, down the road here we have, yeah, Divine Mercy Sunday, homily starter for Divine Mercy Sunday, and uh, Easter homily ideas for Easter-only Catholics. And, of course, we have Pope John Paul's Mercy Sunday homily here uh, from 2001. Great, great uh, resource there. And then we also have... Uh, resources, sample news stories that you can use in the newspapers, like this one here, Calling All Catholics, because you, you don't only want to invite Easter-only Catholics 
to come back. You want to invite the fallen away Catholics to come back too. And if any questions, you can give us a call at 888-732-0722.